Hey, what's up, Zach here, and today I've got the Adidas Speed Portal Messy Point One, and these are all the things his football boots say about his feet, footwork, and just career in general. Here we go. Now, for most, if not all, of Messi's career, he's made a living off of doing things that pretty much nobody else can do, and his human highlight reel is only going to get better as he moves into the MLS playing for Inner Miami. And so it really stands to reason that his boots are going to have some design features and tweaks that not a lot of other football boots have. And when you start in the uppers, the forefoot of Messi's cleats are molded, then that gives way to prime knit here in the tongue, which is actually pretty darn elastic and allows pretty easy entry for a shoe that is so streamlined and is really glove-like fitting on your foot. Really the only padding you get is around the ankle collar and Adidas is known for this having really strategic padding around that ankle collar to suck you into the shoe. But what I think is the best part of the uppers of the speed portals is the lace line. Now on the outside you can see they are all double eyelets here going all the way into the back of the ankle. But the best feature of that system is actually underneath of the shoe. They are reinforced from the inside as well so you are getting a little bit easier load sharing, a little just a little bit better surface area contact and you're just going to get a more durable lockdown. But speaking of that durable lockdown, as you can see these eyelets go so far back here into the ankle collar and heel counter. But what is such a slick design trick here, which incorporates the laces into the external heel counter here, the stability wing, is that if you look on Adidas's website, it says that there is pieces of carbon in the stability wing or in the heel counter here. And when you look at it, it just looks like it's plastic. However, when you peel back that stability wing, there is carbon fiber lacing the interface between the stability wing as well as the uppers of the shoe. But how the lace line interacts with that is, is because they put it in there almost like in a mosaic and pieces around the stability wing is it stays pretty light and feathery so that you can actually tie that carbon fiber around your heel, giving you a lot of stability, but also saving a ton of weight. And looking at the breathing capabilities of these materials and the breathability test, they heated up 129.7 degrees, cooled down another 54.5 degrees. But what I did notice is there's not much breathing going on because it is a molded upper. However, they do kind of hang on to heat a little bit more because like I said, there's not really much expelling it and your foot is right on plastic. So I'd say if you are using these in very, very, very hot conditions, you know, they're not gonna be the most breathable thing out there. However, the materials are so light that it kind of counteracts it a little bit. And on the opposite end of that spectrum, on the upper durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, the burr doesn't get through the painted portion of the mold. However, it doesn't get through that clear layer underneath of the mold. So the actual prime knit underneath of there has not been touched. Now I, I will say if you are getting somebody that's stepping on you because it is an entire upper of molded material, it's not gonna be as bad as something, you know, say with a little bit of a lighter material. However, um, it, they're still not gonna be the most protective things out there, but I would say for a shoe as light as it is with kind of the aerodynamic capabilities and speed capabilities that they have, it still is about the most protective you're gonna get. And on the midsole teardown, I was joking around with the members in the early cut members video that there wasn't gonna be much for me to tear down. However, there are a couple distinct layers in these and they all have distinct functions. Now in the rear foot, you have just the molded combined mid and outsole here with just the plastic speed frame. Then once you get in the midfoot, you get a much more flexible plastic. That's that black plastic that you can see on the outside as well. And that does allow a little bit more efficient bending here in the midfoot and the forefoot Foot, obviously. But then in the forefoot, you actually get a little landing pad here of plastic, which is ribbed all the way from the midfoot to the forefoot, just to number one, give the insole a little bit more traction on the inside of your shoe. Or if you are putting in a custom insole, which we'll talk about in the fit section, just gives the shoe a little bit more stability in the forefoot, a little more load sharing so that your foot doesn't feel those two cleats on the middle of the shoe. And your foot will be less prone to stress fractures because like I said, it's just sharing the load. But interestingly enough, if you look at this midsole on the bounce height, test in the rear foot got 35 centimeters of bounce height in the forefoot 30 centimeters of bounce height so remember you know the whole midsole is basically a shank in these right and so in the rear foot you get a little bit of a bowing effect just because the ball kind of hits between the cleats bends and comes back whereas in the forefoot you have a few more layers of plastic that's just deadening that ball bearing kind of deadening any real snap the shoe is going to give now if you look at the undercarriage of the midsole obviously it is molded with the outsole as well as in the uppers with that speed frame but when you look down here most of the actual cleats 
cleats on these are a three-point cleat, whereas on some other football boots or soccer cleats, whatever you want to call them, you know, a lot of times they are just more linear just to get more grab into the ground, whereas these kind of have multi-directional traction. So when you get your first touch, these offer just a little bit more options in terms of grip going one direction or the other. One of the reasons, would, and we'll get to the other ones, but one of the reasons why I think Messi kind of wants a design like this is because it just affords you so many options and grip. If you look at the speed ratio of the Messi Point One, they come in at a 4.89, which is nuts. It's, it's just how light the shoe is. But also, if you look at its acceleration capabilities, you know, just what can that speed frame actually do when it's at static stance, you bend the shoe, what is it giving you in terms of launch? Now on the Messies, when I bent them to 45 degrees to, to see their angular velocity, they came in at 482.2 degrees per second. Now versus the Mercurial Vapors, they came in at 585.7 degrees per second. And I think the biggest difference between the angular velocity, just the launch capabilities of both of these shoes, is in the forefoot, whereas Messi's boots just have a lot less material in the forefoot. And so, you know, you can't make them so, so stiff. You'll just never be able to wear them versus in the Mercurials, there's a zoom air unit in there, give you a little more comfort so you can actually stiffen the forefoot up, give the shoe a little bit more diving board capabilities, a little bit more launch. However, in the Mercurial Vapors, which we'll get to in their review, you know, there is more between you and the ground, which is, I think, one of the biggest things that is makes these messy shoes, which is, you know, what you can feel underneath your foot in these versus something like this. And one of the most subtle design choices of the speed portals is actually the hardness of the cleats themselves. You know, on the durometer, these only come in about 43.25 on average versus, you know, some other cleats, which come in at around like 52, 53 on the durometer. These are quite a bit softer, a little bit more flexibility on these. This is a cleat that's meant to be played more kind of on, you know, the surface level, not necessarily dig in. And getting into the fit of the speed portals, yeah, this is the part of the video we're gonna start talking about Messi's bare feet. Now, in terms of a narrow or medium foot, you can go true to size if you're a narrow, slender foot, which if you look at Messi's foot right here, that's exactly what he is. He's a very slender, more streamlined foot shape, and that's what really fits these shoes the best, hence that's why they have his name on them. If you're somebody like me with a 2E foot, you're just gonna be you know, going nuts in these. You're gonna need something with a little bit more forgiveness, a little bit more elastic in the forefoot. So, you know, I like that though, when shoes are actually somebody's signature shoe or signature boot, I should say, in this instance. You can tell they were made for his foot shape because if you look at a picture of his foot and you look at the speed portals, it's the same. And that's kind of nice for him because then he can get a more streamlined boot. Now, if you are somebody with heel pain, ball of foot pain, tendonitis, really anything else, you better be customizing these a little bit. There are ways to customize the insole of the shoe just by using moleskin. You can pad them up over the arch. That should be done under the supervision of a foot doctor or you know orthopedic surgeon, it's just somebody that knows what they're doing in terms of customizing an insert. And if you are looking for ways to customize football boots, soccer cleats, uh, and you do want kind of one-on-one one consulting to see what you can get in yours or what you should be putting in yours. I do actually do offer that in the description below. So if you are kind of confused on what you should be doing to make your boots a little bit more comfortable, like I said, just click my link in the description and we can kind of talk about it and make a custom plan for you. You know, in terms of the playability of the speed portals, kind of what they can do in terms of performance, I think it really all comes down to how Messi plays. Now, number one, Messi is not the tallest guy in the world. And I think that's also why you kind of see the design and the shape of the speed portals, that they're so light of a shoe and they give such easy aerodynamics because the shoe is just so streamlined, there's so little material on it, that it kind of makes every stride of his count a little more, especially for him, when he gets one touch on the ball, he can really do some interesting things and get his feet in places where not a lot of other people can. So someone like him who might might need more strides versus someone a little bit taller, something like the speed portals is just going to make his strides more efficient. Efficient, right? There's not a lot of bells and whistles on them. However, in terms of a low to the ground feel in a cleat, which is kind of an oxymoron because a lot of times you're not getting low to the ground feel on a boot, right? However, in the speed portals, there, there is a lot of ground contact. The problem with these is for a lot of other people is because they are so streamlined and so narrow, they're a little bit unstable for a lot of people. 
Whereas Messi has such good proprioception, right? He can get such easy stability off of one foot. And I will say the frame on them is incredibly stable if your foot's not dragging over the sides of it, right? If you don't have like an elephant foot like I do, you know, and you're kind of doing this on the top of them. If you're someone that fits into the actual size of the boot, it's just, you really have to have the, the skills to use these. These are not for somebody with more beginner or intermediate skills. And when you're someone like Messi, who can bring every single intangible to the table already, you know, in your boots, you don't really need a lot that's gonna screw that up, right? He just wants something that he can feel the ground in to let kind of his own talent shine through. He doesn't want anything on the shoe to, to kind of create an intangible for him because he wants to be able to control every aspect of his footwork himself, not the shoe do any work for him like some other shoes do like some other boots do i should say like in the mercurial vapors which are great for a lot of people you know with the zoom air unit in there a little bit more of a chassis system in there whereas for him why would he need it right it's his talent is going to be so much more than anything you can put on his foot so i think that's why he designed them with adidas like they are something that just gives the maximum amount of efficiency for his foot shape and gives a maximum amount of options off of that first touch. But of course, love to hear your thoughts. Have you gone out and bought the speed portals, either the 0.1, 0.2, or 0.3, I think there is. And you know, if there another boot you would actually like to see me review on this channel, let me know down below. Of course, the materials are going to get their review as well, but I'd love to know if there's any others that you would like to see down below. And if you wanna see some other signature shoes from some other just unbelievably talented professional athletes going to the knife, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam, and in this case, all plastic. See you somewhere in the sneakerverse.